If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Shahini Elizabeth. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, 
We remember before you today your faithful servant, Shaheen Elizabeth, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of wisdom chapter 3 beginning at verse 1 but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God and no torment will ever touch them in the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died and their departure was thought to be a disaster. And they're going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they are punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand the truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord.
Good afternoon. A reading from the Word of God, written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 50. What am I saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will be changed. We'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. For when this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying is written, and it will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord.
of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord.
Lord, thy word abideth, and our footsteps guideth. Who its truth believeth, light and joy receiveth. So grant, Lord, that the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My brothers and sisters, it has been two years, two differently difficult years, in which family members, friends, colleagues, constituents, an entire nation have been waiting to bid farewell to one who loved much and was loved in return. Rosie, June, Paul, and other members of the family, while you have tried to make the necessary adjustments to the loss of one so dear, I know that the pain-filled reality of her death is somehow magnified on this day, the anniversary of her birth. And so even after two years, we extend to you our sincere condolences and assure you of our prayers for your continued healing and the presence of shalom within and with you. My task today, however, is not to eulogize Shahini for Corey Robinson. I believe her life and work have already done that quite eloquently. But as I reflected on the legacy she has bequeathed us, her family, friends, ministerial colleagues, and anyone who would aspire to a position of leadership, I came to the conclusion not for the first time, but in a renewed way. Given the prevailing global and national climate of uncertainty as to the true nature of leadership, that contrary to what seems the popular opinion, when leadership that is authentic and this, not applicable only to particular positions or portfolio responsibilities. When leadership is genuine, it finds its reason for being and is always exercised in humble service rather than ubiquitous popularity. So as I reflected, a story found in New Testament scriptures came to mind and heart. It is the story of a woman, Dorcas by name, of whom the message translation of Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 43 tells us. She was a woman who was well known 
for doing good and helping out. She was a woman well known for doing good and helping out. I would urge you, brothers and sisters, to read the text at some point. For once you have, you will appreciate, I hope, why similarities between Dorcas's life and Shahini's would have found resonance with me. The fact is, both women were not only highly esteemed by their constituents, the people they helped out and for whom they did good. They were women from inference in Dorcas's case based on the English translation of her Greek name, which is Gazelle. And in Shahini's, on the basis of what we saw and experienced of her, they were women of gentility, of beauty beyond skin. There is a sense in which both took pride in and consequently derived immense joy from the ministry they exercised among those whose livelihood depended on their virtuous deeds, the constant consistency, and the practical nature of their help. When people mourn the loss of a leader in the open, unabashed lament of which Luke writes in telling Dorcas's story, or that which after two whole years is still being heard from the folk of St. Anne Northeast, there is in such lamentation a message a message about more than the physical presence or political connections of such a leader. That message, brothers and sisters, conveys without need for embellishment the deep, deep convictions of a higher order calling which would have been germane to the character of that leader. So the more I reflected, the more I came to accept that this story in Acts, mirrored in no small way by Shahini Robinson's story, Though it tells of one woman's impact on the life of a community, is a story not simply about her, but about leadership. And not just any kind of leadership. It is a story about exemplary leadership. The kind not given to self or personal aggrandizement. The kind that being divinely inspired cannot be anything but inspiring. The story, brothers and sisters, is one of authentic leadership, transcending boxes, if you will, of gender, denomination, and partisan loyalties, which would seek to confine its reach and impact 
to those narrow spaces. It is a story then about the potential within and as such the possibilities for actualized goodness in every Jamaican leader. Now why do I say this? When our four parents and those who pen the words of our national anthem and pledge, having covenanted with God and hence committing ours to becoming a nation with a pivotal role in the advancement of its own and ultimately humankind's welfare, they were not simply expressing a wish. No. They were articulating for their own and generations yet to come a vision of a nation whose ultimate leader being the eternal father a nation that would always know the blessedness of leadership that is liberated from the tyranny of evil. Evil and its many layered and in some instances subtle and carefully camouflaged manifestations. I am saying, brothers and sisters, that what our four parents envisioned was a nation whose pristine geographical beauty and splendor would be mirrored, even surpassed, in the mores and ways of being of its populace and more especially, its leaders. So yes, our forebears had a vision of godly leadership. Godly leadership that was neither the preserve nor relegated to the ecclesial space alone. Godly leadership, brothers and sisters, that would permeate every nook and cranny of this island mass. From the little house on the corner of a nameless section of the inner city in which mother and father, social and economic deprivations notwithstanding, hold every member of their household including themselves, to that high moral standard that would never, under any circumstance, sell its soul for a vile mess of pottage. Godly leadership, brothers and sisters, from that house to the one named for one of its heroes, and every house in between. Our forebears had a vision. A vision of the designation Jamaican. And I say it with reverence. In this, the 60th year of our independence, we need to be able to say the name Jamaica and Jamaicans with reverence. Our leaders, our forebears, had a vision of the designation Jamaican becoming the definition of all that is just, characterized by integrity, and imbued with a kind of unvarnished humility that takes pride in service above self. So as I reflected 
on Dorcas's life, from the small number of loaded clues given by Luke in telling her story. And as I reflected on Shaheen's life, as a representative of the people, I was inspired to take certain textual liberties. And in so doing, create a profile of the kind and quality leadership they both epitomized. The kind of and quality leadership envisioned and articulated in our anthem and pledge, the kind of and quality leadership that would have inspired dear Mrs. Robinson in doing, doing good and in being the inspirational leader that she was. When, therefore, we place Dorcas's story in juxtaposition with our national anthem and pledge, we are brought face to face with an understanding of leadership being not mere occupation, but leadership as vocation. We are able, by them, to see leadership as being issued by and therefore accountable to God. So listen. Having noted the first Two words in both our anthem and pledge. And just in case you don't remember, let me remind you. In the anthem, it is eternal father. And in the pledge, it is before God. Having noted the first two words in both the anthem and the pledge, I can declare without fear of contradiction or anything else that there is no leader, whether in church or state, who will not have to give an accounting to Almighty God for her or his stewardship. The text brings us face to face then with characteristics of what authentic, God-honoring leadership looks like. And today, I would like to highlight four such. The first characteristic is the industrious spirit. The industrious spirit which speaks to an ethic of diligent dedication to duty beyond lofty speech. Dorcas would have labored, and trust me, there is no pun here. She would have labored long and hard to produce for her constituents that which demonstrated the depth of her commitment to serving them rather than pontificating about service. An industrial spirit aligns with the vision of our forebears held so lovingly by them for this nation. A vision, I believe, that Shahini Robinson caught and was enabled with wisdom and courage of mind, with strength and vigor of her body, even for a brief time, to do good and on behalf of those whom she served. The second characteristic 
is a compassionate spirit. The text tells us that those who were most affected by Dorcas's loss were widows, representing those relegated because of their social and economic circumstances to the margins. Concern for justice with truth, therefore, particularly for those who had none to advocate for them, lay at the heart of Dorcas's ministrations, highlighting the authentic leadership implied in our anthem and pledge that beyond advocating for justice, adjudicates compassion. Compassion in ensuring that the plight of the vulnerable and marginalized is always on the front burner. That political ambitions are held in balance with and therefore never allowed to usurp the place of or become a stumbling block along the pathway to the greater good. So I come to my third characteristic. And that is the spirit of selflessness. So what we have so far seen in Dorcas' story, this, this one woman's story, reflects leadership with characteristics that move it from being an abstract noun to a verb. Leadership of the morally upright and authentic kind envisioned in Jamaica's national anthem and pledge. Leadership that is industrious, steeped in compassion, and as such, is fueled by selflessness. Dorcas obviously ministered from a place of understanding God's own self-giving and the vocation to authentic leadership as one which mirrors the same. And so at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I will say it again. There can be no genuine leadership where selfishness and the lure of mammon are allowed in the driver's seat. And so we come to my fourth characteristic, which is a spirit of graciousness. The spirit of graciousness demonstrated in Dorcas's kindness, generosity, finesse, and that urbane character that, like a magnet, drew others to her. There could not then have been any place in her life for the crass, base, irreverent, unsavory, repulsive ways of being that are too often associated with leaders in our generation. And so I put it to us all today. As we celebrate the life and legacy of one who did good and served well, one like Dorcas who understood leadership as vocation, not mere occupation. I put it to us all today as leaders, gathered to recall and thereby celebrate the life of a colleague, a loved one, who left us in the twinkling of an eye. I put it to us that as we face our own mortality, 
perhaps we need to begin to reckon with the kind and quality leadership and legacy that we will leave behind. Will it be a legacy of good works? Of people lamenting or passing, even as they wax eloquently about the nature of our leadership being service? Or will it be an extremely happy moment for them to bid us farewell with a prayer of thanks for having been delivered from us? None but we, you and me, can give a response to those questions. But I will say this. If Jamaica is truly the land we love, but more especially, if we believe her to be the land God still loves, then we must ensure that generations to come will say of us, because of the leadership we would have exercised, because of the preparations we would have made to secure the beauty, fellowship, and prosperity that every Jamaican must own as their birthright. That in furthering the cause of the welfare, not only of this nation, but of the whole human race, they will say of us, when we shall have passed on, we did good. We did good. And so I close with a quote from Father Richard Rohr founder director of the Centers for Action and Contemplation. It was made in a different context, and yet I believe it can be applied to this one today. And here's what he said. We need transformed people today, not just people with answers. We need transformed people today and not just people with answers. May we all then, as we seek to lead and offer leadership, be open to the transforming and transformative power of Almighty God and so be enabled to exercise leadership as vocation with characteristics that issue from a spirit that is industrious, compassionate, selfless, and gracious to the praise of the Eternal Father and the blessing of Jamaica, Jamaica, the land that we love, the land that God still loves. Amen. Amen.
are so with you. Let us pray. We commemorate the departed, especially our sister, Shahine Elizabeth. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant, Shahine Elizabeth, may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray to you for our sister Shahini Elizabeth and for those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, accept Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The offer to him.
Let us pray. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. People become, become channels, channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of life eternal. For to your faithful people, O oh Lord, Life is changed, not ended, and when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place, eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. For all life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts. And we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all humankind. From the night that our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in like manner after supper had ended, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks... He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. So may Christ make us an unending offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary, Blessed Matthew, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. Remember Shahini Elizabeth. In baptism, she died with Christ. May she also share his resurrection when Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away. On that day we shall see you, our God, as you are. We shall become like you and praise you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, from whom all good things do come. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. And now as our Savior has taught us, so we pray.
of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to Him. I take the body of Christ and I call upon the name of the Lord. I call upon the name of the Lord. You bring the clergy in. You bring the clergy in here.
Let us pray. I invite you to stand for prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction, and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor cry, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Savior. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
heads and pray for God's blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. The recessional.
I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister, Shahini Elizabeth, and we commit her mortal remains to its resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Shahini Elizabeth and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the hymn together, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer.
hand, my friend. Hosanna, I give you strength, my friend. Hosanna, you walk to see, my friend. We're gonna see you Rest eternal grant to Shaheen Elizabeth, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Let us go forth in peace.
Jamaica, home of the resilient, passionate and hardworking. A people and a nation who have achieved and defied all odds, working to keep their economy growing, their country thriving, from investments made in innovative opportunities and exports demanded globally. We have a vision, now within our grasp, where Jamaica becomes the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. We will not let go of this vision. We will grow.